Let's look at Raoult's law, P1 equals X1 P1 standard. Let's start by defining all of the terms in this equation. P1 is referring to the vapor pressure of a liquid in a solution, of the liquid usually being the solvent of the solution. X1 referring to the mole fraction of the liquid in solution. Again, this is usually the solvent in the solution. And then P1 standard referring to the vapor pressure of the liquid if it were pure or when it is pure, not part of a solution. Raoult's law is handy because it allows us to actually calculate the vapor pressure of a liquid when it's in a solution, as long as we know the mole fraction of the liquid in the solution. One of the problems with Raoult's law is that it requires us to know the concentration of the solution in terms of the liquid, which is typically the solvent. Normally when we express concentration of a solution, we express it in terms of the solute, not in terms of the solvent. So the notation is a little bit weird in Raoult's law, just in terms of how we are expressing the concentration. Let's see if we can make this equation a little bit more useful for us. Um, in order to do this, we're going to be doing some algebra, and we are going to start by thinking about the change in the vapor pressure. So how we would define mathematically the change in the vapor pressure for substance number one. We, again, in Raoult's law, we use the number one just to indicate one of the molecules the solvent molecule. So the vapor pressure change, the delta means change, the change in the vapor pressure for molecule number one is going to be the difference between the vapor pressure of the pure liquid and the vapor pressure of the liquid when it is part of the solution. So if we just take the vapor pressure of the pure liquid and we subtract the vapor pressure of the liquid once it's become part of a solution, that gives us overall the change in vapor pressure for that particular substance. What I would like to do is take Raoult's law the way that is written right now. Raoult's law gives us a definition of P1. It says that P1 is equal to X1 times P1 standard. So I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna plug it into this delta P equation. I'm gonna, instead of writing P1, I'm gonna use Raoult's law to write something different in this place. So I'm gonna get the change in the vapor pressure for this molecule number one. It is equal to the vapor pressure of the pure substance minus the mole fraction times the vapor pressure of the pure substance. Now, right now it might not seem that we're doing anything useful, but just bear with me and you will see that this is about to get useful. I am going to um, do some algebra in the next step. So I'm gonna see that on this side of the equation, I have P1 standard twice. So I'm just gonna combine those terms. Again, just gonna do some algebra here. And I'm gonna get the delta P1 is equal to P1 standard times one minus X1. Um, so I'm doing basically like the opposite of expanding. Now I see that I have this one minus X1 standard and let's kind of pause for a minute and think about mole fraction. We know that if we have a solution that has two components in it, the mole fraction of one component plus the mole fraction of the other component always adds up to one. If we had a solution that had three components, we could say the mole fraction of component number one plus the mole fraction of component number two plus the mole fraction of component number three would equal one. However many components we have, all of their mole fractions always have to add up to one. This is just a property of mole fraction. And so I could, I could actually manipulate this a little bit. I could say, okay, the mole fraction of component number two is equal to one minus the mole fraction of number one. So what I've done here is I've taken some, I've done some algebra. I've done, uh, I've subtracted X1 from both sides of the equation. And that's given me this equation right here. So again, I'm gonna plug in, I'm gonna take this term, one minus x1, and instead of writing one minus x1 in this equation, I'm going to write x2 in its place. So I'm gonna say delta P1 equals P1 standard times the mole fraction of component number two. And this is actually a much more useful form of Raoult's law. So I'm actually gonna kind of move it and make it a different color because this is typically the form of Raoult's law that we use when we're doing these types of calculations. And let's take a, a look at each one of these terms. So this delta P1, this is the change or specifically the lowering of the vapor pressure of our solvent. P2 
standard we already have defined is the vapor pressure of the pure liquid, which we usually know because we can look it up. And X2 is the mole fraction of our solute, which makes more sense because typically, as I said before, typically we express concentration in terms of our solute, not in terms of our solvent.